So now let's uh, open your Eclipse. Oh, I'm sure you have already. For me to open my Eclipse. <coughs> sure, I have that. Okay, good. Okay, so let's go to the project here for this this week. So week twelve, lab one, and then let's go to. Okay, let me just rename that quickly. That's for yesterday. So let me just do that quickly. New package session one. That's from yesterday. And for today, today is session two. Okay, so it's a CSE 114 Spring 16, week 12, lab one. And I just need another package for today, session two. Okay. So let's see how we can do this, right? So now, first of all, let's create the account class, okay? New class and account. Okay, in the account class, you can see that over there, we have uh, ID, we have balance, we have account, constructor, okay? So now you have an option. Either you can just say, you can put the ID as one of the parameters for the constructor, or you can use the static variable mechanism we show you before the midterm. Let's just follow closely what the uh, the quiz question over there is telling you to do. You can just follow closely, but you can also do the static variable vari variance if you like. So let's say here integer ID, and then we have double balance. And we have the constructor here, which will take one parameter, the ID. Okay, so now we're gonna set the ID accordingly. This the ID is assigned to ID, and also balance just to be initialized as zero. And we also have the mutator method, which will set a balance. Set balance to be some balance, right? So double balance, and then this dot balance is assigned to balance. Okay, let's do this first. And then let's do the uh, client class. We'll go gradually. So I do want to show you some points which will be useful for your quiz on Friday, I hope. So account, and also we have the class called clients. So now in a client class, let's say here, we have string name, and we have an array of accounts, just call it accounts, and also we have integer the number of accounts. So now in the constructor here, we have clients, and it's going to take one parameter as the name. And then we're going to say this dot name, assigned to name, and also accounts is assigned to a new account array of size five. Okay. okay. And also we need the uh, normal uh, ordinary mutator for adding the accounts. So void add account, let's say account ACC. And of course you know how to do it, right? So now you can say accounts at position, the number of accounts is assigned to ACC and then increment the counter afterwards. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's exactly what's said in the instruction. So now let's try to test the code to ver make, verify that line number eight is going to pres uh, going to print out false. Okay, that's why that's why we got something to do to make it true. Let's create a new class over here called uh, let's say account tester, a client tester maybe. So now new class, let's say client tester with a main method there, and say finish. Okay. Let's follow exactly what's, uh, what's written on the uh, quiz there. So you would say account ACC1 is assigned to new account with the ID 34. Okay. And then we have ACC1 dot set balance to be 1500. And then we have account ACC2 is assigned to a new account it's also uh, 68 okay it's a different account of course because IDs are different 
And also we have ACC2 dot set balance uh, uh, 3000. Okay, and we have account ACC3 is assigned to new account with ID 34. And then ACC3 dot set balance to be 1500. So now you can see that ACC1 over here has 34 and 1500. ACC3 also has uh, also has 34 and 1500, right? That's and also we have account ACC4. New account with ID 68. And after that we say ACC4 does set balance to be 3000. Okay, and again you can see ACC2 has 68 and 3000. ACC4 has 68 and 3000. Okay. So now let's try one thing first. Okay, I'm gonna do something slightly more than uh, the uh, uh, what's in, written in the quiz. Can we just say system .out dot print line? First of all, let's try this. If I say acc one acc one equals equals acc three. Okay, and then it's gonna be acc one equals equals acc three. And let's try another one. Let's say, so this one we know very well is going to compare addresses, uh, line 15. But line 16, we try to compare, we intend to compare the contents of the, uh, the two objects, namely the ID and also the balance. ACC1 dot equals ACC3. Okay, so now let's try this. ACC1 dot equals ACC3. Okay, and now let's do the same for AC, between ACC2 and ACC4. ACC2, ACC4, ACC2, ACC4. <coughs> ACC2, ACC4, and 2, uh, and 4. Yeah, I'll give you time to time. Take your time. And when you're done, predict what's going to be output to count them. It's going to be four outputs. Just give me tell me true or false. You know, one, two, three, four. Any idea? What about 15? Are you still typing? Okay, I shouldn't distract you. <laughs> as soon as you're ready. Okay, 15. False, very good, because they can't be average. Okay. What about 16? Okay, the printout of false is right. You thought that should be true, right? You thought that should be true because ACC1 has 34. ACC4 has, uh, has 34 as well, and also 1500. However, let's see what happens. It's very good thinking, but <laughs> you know, you're missing one important detail here. So let's see this. If I put a breakpoint here, line 16, okay, let's see what happens. Oh, just before I do this, let's just double check. Okay. So we do have false over here and false here, which is kind of weird, you might think. Okay. Can we just put a breakpoint here, 16, okay, right before we do acc1.ecros. So now if you go for run debug as Java application. So now we're here. <coughs> Right before we do the comparison, so let's step into. So let's uh, step over the string, and step into again. Okay. So now let's see which version of the equals method that's going to be called. If you step into, you will see that we are now in the equals method from the object class. Why? Let me let me explain. Very important point. <coughs> Remember, we said already. That in Java, the object class is the ancestor class of every every class. The object is always at, at the top of the hierarchy. So somehow you can think of the object class is extended by the uh, account class. Okay. So now <coughs> the object class has an equals method. So it's going to be boolean and then equals. Know with some parameter here, right? So 
Now, let's check the definition for account over here. You can see in the account class, we have no equals method redefined. No, right? So that means this version here is going to be inherited to here directly. So that's why when you try to say acc equals, it is going to call this version here. Right? And this version here is going to contain addresses of the two objects by default. Okay, so far so good? Okay, that's very important. So you, if you want to judge to see which version this is going to call, you have to see if the equals method has been redefined from the object class. If it has been, then of course this version will be called. If it has not been, then this version will be called. Okay, okay so now the way <coughs> to fix this, you can also refer to the previous lab exercise, which we also did different versions. We just don't do it here. Okay, so now uh, let me just go back to the uh, client tester here. Let me just say something here. If if we do not explicitly, okay, let me just turn off the lights. <coughs> If we do not explicitly redefine or overwrite the equals method that is inherited from the object class, then the version defined in objects will be called, which is exactly what's, what just happened. Okay. And the version defined object class will simply compare addresses. Okay, that's something you can refer back to the lab exercises and lecture notes. So now, how do we fix this? Okay, the way to fix this is by going to the account class, and now we have to explicitly redefine the uh, equals method. So redefine the equals method. Okay, how about this? Let me just make it more complete for you. The inherited equals method from the object class only compares addresses which is not appropriate for our purpose it's not appropriate so so we choose to redefine the equals method here okay that's exactly what we're going to do now and once we do that whenever we call the dot equals method on the account objects it is going to call this uh, redefined version so now we can say boolean equals and the same type as a class account other <coughs> and as defined in your uh, quits uh, instruction there two accounts will be considered the same if their IDs and balances are the same. So the simplest way you can write this would be, you can say return this.balance equals equals other the balance and also ID. You can say this.id equals equals other dot ID. M percent, M percent. So that's a conjunction. So this is simplest way you can write. Yeah, I can know. Okay, that's the simplest. Or, let me just give you another version here. That's the simplest one. Let me just put it into comments. Or you can say, boolean result, uh, just say initially is false. Eventually, it will return the result. And now we have to set the result properly. You can say result is reassigned to this.id equals equals other dot id and percent and percent uh, pretty much the same as before and this dot balance equals equals other dot balance okay both will work so it's really up to you okay if you find the uh, longer version more intuitive to you feel free by all means that's absolutely fine okay you got two versions here Okay, let's see what happens now. What happened was, so now we no longer have this version from the object class anymore. So now we have a new version as defined, redefined accounts. So we have boolean and then equals. So 
So now we've got two versions of the equals method. So now when we go back and execute the same uh, line of code, so now you can see, let's just run the debugger first. If you go back to tester here, so we still have our breakpoint here. Let's try again. If you say run debug as Java application. So now we are stop at the same line over here. Okay, acc1 dot equals acc3. So now if I say step into, okay, let's just step over the stream and step into again. So now you can see that we are now in the equals method in the account class, but not in the object class anymore. Why? Because we explicitly redefine the equals method in the account class. Follow? Okay, good. Yeah. Very important. Okay, so now let's go back to where we were. So now let's go to the uh, tester here. So now, can we just uh, go on? So if you look at your instructions there, I'm now doing line number five. <coughs> so now let's say clients C1 is assigned to new clients uh, here uh, with a name. Jin Davis clients C2 new clients also the same name, Gene Davis, exactly the same name. Okay, so now let's see this. When we say c add account acc1, and c add account acc2, and c2 add account acc3, c2 add oh, c2 add ACC4. Okay, so now we're going to do something similar. So now let's try to do the two kinds of comparison. So let's say system line. <coughs> so let's say uh, C1 equals equals C2. And that should be C1 equals equals C2. System line. C1 dot equals C2. So here we have C1 dot equals C2. So now I would like you to predict again what's <coughs> going to be the output from these two lines, 31 and 32. True, false. And to answer that, I would suggest you have a look at the client class. Okay, you can see there. That's it. That's all. You, that's all you have. So now let's go back to the tester. So first of all, line number 31. That easy. Right? That should be all. It's blocking. <coughs> okay, 31. TA? 31? Oh yeah, maybe not 31 in Ruby. That's right. So when we do C1 equals equals C2. False, right? Because we have pair addresses. So what about 32 here? When we say C1 dot equals C2. True or false? True? So it turns out it will be false, actually. Okay, why? Why would that be false? Sanjo, why would that be false? No, we didn't compare the array. Uh, that's true. So let me, oh, let me be more uh, specific. When I execute <laughs> line number 32, which version of the equals method am I going to call? Mm, but you know, you can see that in the client class over here, we don't seem to have the equals method, right? Remember C1 and C2, they are clients, they are not accounts. C1 and C2. So now I'm doing C1 that equals C2. So now my question is, which version is of the equals method is this going to call? Uh, the, object. the object class, right? Because somehow we didn't redefine. <coughs> so now so now let's expand this by a little bit. So now what happens is we also have 
another subclass over here, which is clients. And if you look at the client class over there, you can see in the client class, we did not explicitly redefine the equals method. You can see the equals method is also inherited in this class here. Uh, since we didn't redefine that, so we are simply going to call that directly, right? So that means this one is going to be inherited to here directly, okay? And this one here is going to actually compare the addresses rather than contents, right? So in order to actually make sure you call the right version of equals, we have to explicitly redefine that here. And what we're going to do now is to define, redefine the Boolean equals method here. That's what we're going to do. So we want to make sure we don't use this default version of the object class. Okay? So that's why you will see that what we have, what we're going to have done, it will be this equals method here, and this equals method is in the two classes. Okay, so let's see how we can redefine the equals method in the uh, uh, client class. If you go to the uh, client class, okay, according to your instructions there, they say that two clients are considered equal if their names and list of accounts are equal. Okay, so now first of all, let's declare the method first. So we're gonna say boolean equals and then the same uh, just clients other. Okay, so in this case, I would suggest we declare a local variable called result and then gradually set it. That'll be easier. So let's say boolean result. I'll give the initial value in moments. And then eventually you want to return the result. Okay. Now, what should be the initial value for result? You can say that's false. That's what you can do. And so now, because we can see there are two conditions for determining if the two clients are equal. First of all, their names should be equal. So now you can say result is simply reassigned to if this domain. Can I say equals equals? Can I do that? Easy. Why not? So you should use the equals method, right? Good. Very good. <coughs> That's exactly the point. Okay, that's good. So now this is the first condition here. And for the second condition, we're going to run a loop uh, to make sure that uh, the two uh, account, uh, the two clients actually got the same uh, number of clients. Uh, sorry, the two clients got the same number of accounts. And also each account is equal. So now we can do this. For example, you can say if this dot number of accounts happens to be equal to other dot number of accounts. If this is the case, it has the potential to be equal. Otherwise, it should be false, right? Because they simply don't have the same number of accounts. Otherwise, results should just be false. Okay. So it might be that the names are the same, but the number of accounts are different, right? <coughs> so now over here, we're going to run the loop. You can say for integer i assigned to zero, i less than the number of accounts, i plus plus. So now let me try something and ask you if that's correct or not. If I say result is assigned to, let's say this dot uh, id equals equals other dot id. Okay, let me separate them into two lines over here. And uh, sorry, this dot accounts i id yeah that's what I meant. Other dot accounts at position i dot id and the and also the balance. Let me just copy this line. So now I should say balance rather than id. Okay, you can just type first, and then there is some problem with this loop here. I would like you to tell me what it is. Oh, 
Okay? So this code will run, but this logical error. Can you see what it is? It seems to be okay. We simply say every time when we are trying to look at accounts at position I, we simply compare the IDs and other balances of the two accounts at the same positions in this and other, right? But what's wrong with this? So the result equals this. I think that's something similar in the midterm, actually. In question one, if you still recall. Something similar, actually. I forgot which part of this slide it is. Yeah, and then focus on this one. What's wrong with that? Think about it. Meanwhile, I'm going to draw something on the board to help you. Okay? <coughs> Think about it. Quite important. Yeah, let's say we only have two accounts, how about that? Uh, let's say three, just to make it simple. Right, it's too complicated. Okay, I'm going to give you one input, and you can try to run that in the loop and tell me what's wrong with that, okay? That's the hint for you. Let's say that's the account object. We got three accounts in each client. So let's say this one here is c1.accounts. And this one here is c2.accounts. Here, I'm just going to write the two attributes. Okay, let's say here, uh, let's say the ID is 34, 68, 30, and 67. Let's say uh, 50 and 50. Let's say for balances 100, 200, 300, 400. Let's say 700 and 700. So now, I can see that, right? Okay, so you can see that C1 that accounts has three accounts. These two, uh, three accounts, ID 34, 68, 50. Balances 100, 200, 700. And now for C2 accounts, we got 30, 67, 50 for IDs, 300, 400, 700 for balances. So now, apparently, you can see that although we have the same number of accounts, right, three and three, but you can see that the first account, they're completely different. The second account, they're completely different. So overall, it should be false, right, overall. However, tell me what the loop is going to tell you. Uh, it will show true because it doesn't accumulate the results. Exactly. It doesn't accumulate the results. Everybody follow? Or you're possible. Do you? Are you okay with that? Should I say it one more time? Okay, so you can see that over here, uh, we got three accounts here. You can, you can see the loop. The loop simply says the result is going to be assigned to if the current account we're looking at has their IDs and balances equal. So they are, it, it doesn't really accumulate the result. So even though the first accounts are not equal, and the second accounts are not equal. But now suddenly the third accounts are equal. But overall it should not be equal, right? Right? But somehow you just assign the last result we compare, right? But of course in the final exam, no hints. So please make sure you understand this uh, attitude. Okay? Very important. Okay. Okay, so that's a reason. So Sanjo, since you spotted the logical error, how shall we how should we fix it? So it's all very good. Thank you. Exactly. Okay, that's what you should do. So now this one should work. And then uh, let's double check that this works and then I'll show you some possible improvement over this. So now if you do uh, run it again, you can see that it's now true. Okay, so C1 equals C2, it's not true. Okay, so we are now really comparing 
the uh, contents of the uh, accounts and clients. But now you can see something here. So here we'd say this the accounts I the ID, and this the accounts I balance. We're comparing ID and balances. But didn't we define something similar already in the equals method for the account? So now somehow we are duplicating the code, right? So it'd be much easier if we can just reuse this equals method here. Okay, that's uh, something you should really get used to. So now let me just put this into comments here. So now what we can do here is to say and this dot accounts at position i dot equals and then other dot accounts at position i. That will also work. So both versions work, but this version is way better because you're making use of something you defined already. So you don't have any duplicates. This version way better. <coughs> okay, let's go back to the account class over here. Oh, sorry, the tester. Yeah, the tester here. So now, if you run the code again, you're gonna see true. So it's still okay. Okay, to conclude this exercise here, I would like to post one question for you to think about. Let's say we. So now let's let me make a, a small change here. So now let me go to the account class. Okay, if I go to the account class, let me just comment out this equals method here, which means it is not there, as if it was not there. Okay, just comment this out. Okay, so now if I go back to the tester here, I want to focus on this line over here. When I say c1 dot equals c2. Right. Apparently, it is going to call the equals method that is defined in the client class over here, right? Over here, okay. And you can see that inside the equals method for the clients, somehow we have to call the equals method for the account over here, right? So now I want you to tell me if you think this c1 dot equals c2 will remain true or it will not become false? That's my question to you. That's actually also illustrated uh, last week's lab, but yeah, I just want to emphasize that again. Do you see what the question is? The question, again, if I commented out the equals method from the account class, so it's not there anymore, let's say, temporarily. In this case, will this c1 dot equals c2 here still be true, or it's gonna be false? That's my question. If you think that's true, you're fine. Uh, that's fine. But if you think that's false, why not? Uh, why that would be false? Did I say you get a bonus 10% if you end this time? No, no, that's not true. That's, not true. that's too risky. Now think about it. Think about it. Why don't we ask? Uh, yeah, yeah. Does it comply? <laughs> yeah, it does comply. Yes. It does comply. Remember that you always compile because you always got the version <laughs> the version from the object class. So the issue is really about which version of the equals method it is going to call. Is it going to call the version from the object class, or is it going to call the version that you might have redefined in your own class? So what I just did was I wiped out this version here. That's what I just did. Right? Kelly? It seems like a click to me, so, so how do you think? Um, <laughs> you just tell me how you think. Yeah. Oh, you mean, okay, sure. So if you go to the account class here, yes, over here. So I think you can think of, I simply delete that. Think of that. If I, just, if I simply just delete that equals method, I'm, I'm going to undo in a moment, but let's see if I do that. Then, is it going to change the output of uh, this line here in the tester? C1 dot equals C2. So, Yeji, you said it's going to change. Why? Please, enlighten us. Yeah? Okay, no problem. 
Yes. Um, if you remove the whole that part from your account, five, okay. Yeah, yeah. The things that you wrote in client class. Okay. Let me five. go there first before you go on. Okay. If I now go to a client class, yes. This part will mm -hmm. not function. That which means it's going to be the other part. So what do you mean? This part will not function well. Uh, be a little bit more specific. What do you mean? It's not going to function well. Since we use the disk.com account ID. Already deleted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me one thing. So now, which version of the equals method do we think is wrong? That's the key. Do you use uh, okay? Before we deleted that block of code, it's going to call the equals method that we defined in the uh, account class. But now, since we deleted that, so now which version of the equals method is going to call? That's a key thing. Same as the object. Exactly. Because if you delete that version there, so that means it's simply going to use the version that's inherited to the class. So that's a key. Okay. So very important. Very good. <coughs> okay, so now that's very good. So now let me just uh, undo it. I'll make another comments for you. So now so now I'm gonna say this. If we now delete this equals method, then the equals method that we redefine or overwrite in clients will not function well. Okay, let me be more specific. Okay, let me just uh, refer to, let's see. Let me just refer to this line here. Okay. This is because the line like that is going to call the uh, the version uh, of equals method inherited from the object. Plus, okay, something like that. Yeah, so do study this example carefully because I think at some somewhere I'm just just trying to repeat what I said last time. So very important. So if you copy this back, if you put it back, then now we do have this redefined versions back. So if you make sure it will be called instead rather than the, uh, that one. <coughs> okay, any question about this? Well, actually, we are going much slower today, which is good, you know, it's good to be thorough. Okay, if you're done, then let's do something else, okay? Let me just stop the recording here. <coughs>